Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later on in the program, we'll be taking a look at the legality, the constitutional legality of the fiscal cliff deal. But first, just another gay man who wants, uh, wants to get at me. The Speaker of the House. <laughs> so glad to have you here, Mark Ferrandino. It's great to Congratulations be on, on uh, becoming Speaker of the House. Thank you. That's um, very exciting. It's not a, it wasn't a surprise. I think most people thought that Republicans were losing, losing the grip on, um, on, they only had one seat. So yeah. you, and what, what and are, by what, only 197 votes, they had won that seat in 2010. Uh, and then this last election, Democrats were able to win pretty much every competitive race in the state. Now we have a 37 to 28 majority in the House of Representatives. How many seat advantages do the Dems have now? Nine seats in the House, five in the Senate. Nine. So you went from a one-seat deficit to a nine-seat plus. Yes. Holy crap. It's a very nice place to be. No, it's an awful place to <laughs> for be. For you, maybe, but awful, I think for the people of Colorado who no, voted me. us in, I think you're very happy with the outcome. And hopefully this session, when we get done with session, they'll be proud of what we were able to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my Wyoming citizenship requirements. <laughs> let, 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 I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> let, let's talk about uh, the ending of last session was such a remarkable debacle with the handling of the civil unions bill, where there were enough uh, votes on the, on the floor and went through the Senate. It or was uh, and and it looked like your guys were going to get it, and then with some procedures, it didn't happen. So the obvious question I think most people are asking is this going to be, you know, bill number one uh, as your speaker to finish up what didn't get finished last year? Um, the Senator Stedman, who was the sponsor of the bill last year, is going to introduce in, in the Senate just like he did uh, the previous year on opening day. It'll be one of the each member has to introduce one bill on opening day. It'll be his bill. I don't think it'll be Senate Bill One, but it'll be somewhere in the. First first 35 bills of the Senate and to move through the process pretty quickly. Last year we waited till the end because we were trying to get a Republican to sponsor the bill in the House, but we weren't able to. So eventually I carried it. But this time we're not waiting for a Republican sponsor. We already have uh, over 50 co-sponsors, a majority in the House and the Senate co-sponsoring civil unions. So it my, will get my to the suspicion, I told you this last year, my suspicion was if it ever made it to the House floor that it would have passed with a lot of Republican votes. Votes, even those Republican votes who probably said publicly they really didn't want it. I don't think they wanted to be on the wrong side of history on, on this one. The next, th this is a done deal. Yeah. I mean, it, it, if, if you're looking for a suspension, there's no suspense. <laughs> when it comes, it comes. It, it's right. going to happen, which leads a lot of activists to say, well, come on, civil unions is not enough. Why don't you refer something to the people to undo the ban on gay marriage and so that there can be gay marriage here? Is yeah, that something, I mean, something that you're looking at? Is that something that's hot on your agenda? No, when you look at uh, what's happened nationwide, we're four states that this last election voted for marriage equality. Um, there's definitely, there I got a lot of emails from people uh, who were saying we should just not go for civil unions, go for full marriage equality. You know, when we take the oath next Wednesday, uh, we take an oath to uphold the Constitution. So civil unions is what I can do within the Constitution. I think long term... You can, you, you can always, you can always uh, offer something to the people. You refer things to the people all the time to That change. takes two-thirds of both chambers right. to do that. That's not realistically, not yeah, to get through the legislature. But still, it, it, it really is a remarkable movement politically. I mean, it, it, it is a mind-blowing thought that within just a few decades, something that would be inconceivable is now standard and I imagine will be sweeping the nation pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, I mean, when I was a kid growing up and I came out right uh, before Matthew Shepard was murdered, um, and just the the attitude and understanding in communities around LGBT and, and recognition of same-sex couples um, was not just not even thought about. I mean, I, when I was growing up, never thought we'd have states with marriage equality. Now, it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when that we're going to have Maryland equality. Maryland has equality. Marriage, that, uh, Maryland, and, the Maryland and Washington State and Maine, this last election, all voted for marriage equality at the ballot box, and Minnesota voted down a definition of marriage for between a man and a woman. And now I think their legislature is looking at doing it uh, through the legislative process, so is Illinois. So we're having more and more states go towards either civil unions or marriage equality. All right, so, by the way, being gay, so last week. <laughs> if you, you, if you need something a bit more fashionable, more up-to-date. I'll, I'll try. All right. So uh, let's, let's go to the things that are going to be hot and heavy. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about taxes. I want to talk about guns. And, but first, let's, let's, talk, let's talk pot. I mean, this okay. is something... Oh. 
Out of all the things that were on the ballot, I, I, if I had the 20 bucks to put down, where I would have lost it was on uh, 64. I thought it would get close, it yeah. would get really close to the point where we would have to have a real discussion because it, it would happen in the future. I was surprised by it. I don't know if you were. What I, is it? What is it you guys have to do, and you have to get it done this session? Otherwise, all the municipalities get to make their own rules. Right, and I, I would probably be right where you were. I thought it would probably get close, but not pass. And I have some concerns with how the language was written um, and so I was you know I was ambivalent I didn't yeah. it was hard for me to make my decision up on amendment 64 but what the legislature needs to do now is implement and do what the will of the people wanted I mean it wasn't even close it passed I believe in every county uh, in the state and passed by 10 percent uh, statewide. And so we have an obligation as elected officials to uphold the Constitution. The governor, uh, and I've talked to him about this, the ta set up a task force to look at all the different aspects around regulation. They have to come back to the legislature by the end of February. Uh, there are four legislators on that. Hopefully they can spearhead it through the legislature anything that we need to do, which is significant stuff around criminal justice, around decriminalizing marijuana, dealing with uh, all those criminal statutes, dealing with regulation of how how you grow marijuana, how you distribute it, the do, sales. Do a couple of the, of the quick ones. The amendment gives you the ability to ask for a tax increase up to a 15% in yeah. excise tax. And, well, you're Democrats, so you'll be asking for the 15%. Um, I don't know if we'll be asking for really? this 15%. Well, if, I mean, you have to look at the right number. If you get too high, then you push it down to the black market instead of actually allowing the market to these there. are stoners. They'll be, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be selling their mom's jewelry. They, they don't, they, they'll, it'll be fine. Um, what, do you think the, what do you think the tax will be? Uh, you know, at the task force, that's one of the things they need to look at. I, I definitely think when you look at cigarettes and alcohol, they both have excise tax. It makes sense. If we're going to have recreational marijuana, it should have an excise tax, too. Um, I don't know what the right percentage is, but I think the campaign was campaigning on $40 million for school construction. I think we need to look at an excise tax that would roughly bring that in. smoking dope has a whole lot to do with school construction. Well, but that's what but the voters voted on. I so understand. I, I'm no, not, they, I they, voted on, they voted on dope. I think well, they didn't understand... What what was going on there, but I, I agree with him. Let me let me give you my bit of lobbying since I have you. Sure. Two two quick things. I hope. Are that you register as a lot? No. I, <laughs> here's some here's some money. Let me the the excise tax. I hope will go to things that are actually related to the enforcement of of the law and perhaps uh, rehab, and not do what we do with uh, taxes on cigarettes, where it goes to read to achieve programs and building sidewalks. I hope that there is something connected with those two. And also, I know it, it's supposed to be regulated like alcohol, but please. Don't regulate it like alcohol, because <laughs> in, in this state, our alcohol laws are just ridiculous. We, we, we can't have any um, uh, retail outlets that are owned by the same people. You can only own one, and it yeah. just makes for a terrible system. Where, where so I please. was going to ask if we were going to have 3-2 marijuana yeah, three, or, <laughs> or full-strength marijuana, and uh, those have to be different. Well, um, would, you, would you agree? So, yeah. so you yeah. guys are going to pass a set of, set of regulations. If my intention is to get something done, because I think, as you said, if we do nothing, all the municipalities would do their own. And I think that's just not fair for the people of Colorado who intended a statewide system around regulating marijuana. We need to act. Uh, I think it's just tough if every municipality has different rules. And just if you cross a border, you're going to have different rules of how you operate. Same thing. Let's let's talk guns. Okay. First time since even after Columbine, as a gun owner, I'm concerned about what's going to happen uh, D.C., what's going to happen here. Uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions on, on what what even the language we use on what is a quote assault weapon, right. what is a high capacity magazine. I know I know you you're a good politician, so you won't say what's going to happen. <laughs> what? But let me ask you, what's likely going to happen? Are, are you guys? Uh, what's what's the flavor down there on? on passing something to restrict Second Amendment rights. Well, I think when we look... Notice the way I said that. I, I know. Good, huh? I do. I yeah. notice that. The, when you look at what happened in uh, both uh, Newtown and Aurora, there's definitely a desire by legislators to deal with that, to try and lessen. We're never going to stop that. I just you, you can't be realistic and say you are going to be able to stop a madman from being able to carry out something if they're so dedicated in a society where we're free like we are. So that being said, how do we reduce the risk of that? And that is looking at mental health. Governors come out with some proposals around mental health, increased funding for mental health. I think that's key. 
Um, and then we need to look at guns and what we deal with guns. So should someone who has a 72-hour mental health hold be able to, when they walk out, buy a gun? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of different proposals. We should use our First Amendment right to have a conversation about what is the appropriate level of uh, controls around the Second Amendment. And that might be, I mean, the NRA came out with the idea that we should have guns in every school. That didn't help in Columbine. Uh, we had guns there. And didn't happen in uh, Virginia Tech, where the police had guns. But, well, look, but that being said, that, that should be that part discussion. of the conversation. I mean, we, we use a euphemism. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, part of that conversation, yes, their guns have been used in each of these these massacres. The other thing that is in, in common is, as you said, there's mental health issues. It's almost always a young man with mental health yeah. issues. The other part is, it's almost always in a gun-free zone. That uh, whether it's Aurora shooting, Columbine. Uh, 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 Newtown. These were, these were places that even a sick person who can do a little bit of risk assessment knows they're not going to meet a whole lot of resistance, at least at least for a while. Will there be some discussion? See, discussion yeah. on changing that so that that the concealed carry laws don't have these great exceptions uh, uh, at, on schools. You know, uh, I don't think that's the solution. Uh, I know there'll probably be others on the other side of the aisle who would like, are going to probably bring bills around. Will they get a fair hearing, yes. hearing or will they go yeah. to state, state no, affairs? No, I, I think that when you look at these issues, um, what would be important is that we look at all the gun bills that are coming out uh, from the left and the right and say, well, what of, of these policies is going to actually help uh, reduce the risk of these type of massacres? And so if we can figure out the right policy, I mean, I know, I, you know, we definitely on our side have our thoughts. I think the Republicans, as we've seen over the last couple of years around uh, increasing the accessibility of guns, uh, reducing background checks, that's what the... I mean, reducing background checks. I don't remember anybody well, doing permit, that. Well, permit, sorry, not back, but permitting of uh, concealed carry weapons to get rid of the concealed carry permit so that you can just conceal without getting the permit, yes. So... Well, there's also, uh, real quickly on that, yeah. the state spends a few million dollars on a CBI background check, while the feds do it for free, uh, an instant check program that doesn't have the backlog of seven days right now here in Colorado, why not save the millions of dollars and just use the federal system? Well, we have to remember why we did the state system. It was after Columbine that that was passed, and then we started the state system because of some of the domestic violence issues, some of the uh, municipality crimes that aren't in the CBI, I mean, in the national right. background check. If we can get them all to match up where we're not missing some of the things, I think, great, let's use one system. But if we don't have a robust system, then we are letting people who shouldn't be getting guns to have guns. So, I mean, I think that should be part of the conversation. I don't want excess regulation. Uh, I want to find Democrat. Of I course, you want right excess regulation. regulation. Right size regulation. Talking about being a Democrat, taxes. So you'll be coming forward certainly with a tax increase for recreational marijuana. Yes. But then there's this very scary for me, uh, kill Tabor TBD vague thing that's out there. Um, what's likely to happen this this season? Now, now that you guys did so well in the presidential election, uh, registration seems to be going on. Employment seems to be getting a little bit better. Yeah. Now is the time to go out and, and raise some taxes. What do you? Will you? Will you, will you be seeing any? Or can you give me a promise that's not going to happen? Promise no. me. Well, I can't ever promise you, you anything. We have, 100, we, have a, we have 100 members in the legislature, the and they can introduce up to five bills. Hey, Frank uh, Nolte my... could promise me gay marriage wasn't going to happen. Come on, <laughs> make me a promise. So, um, you know, the legislature can't do anything unless it refers it to the ballot. Um, so, at the end of the day, if anything was to come out, and I don't think something will come out of the legislature, uh, it would go to the ballot for people to decide. Um, when we look at there have been many different committees, both TBD, the Fiscal Stability Commission, DU's panel on the state's fiscal situation. There are problems. It is not sustainable. And I think we'll have different opinions on how you solve that issue, uh, but it's a both a spending and a revenue problem, I think, and we need to deal with both. We need to figure out where we don't want to spend, what we can cut, and we need to figure out where we have the right, right. amount of revenue to I pay for the system we so have. I so much better before you were speaker. I got yeah. better answers. You, you, you just went to politician school one-on-one. Uh, on one you, didn't you? But, got you nothing know, there. Uh, nothing. It's, no, it's, it's, this is, Tabor says, we have to have a conversation with the people of Colorado through the ballot box. If you want to raise taxes. Right. 
So if people want to go and make sure that we have a higher education system that can be adequately funded, a K-12 system that's been cut by over a billion dollars against Amendment 23, if we can restore that, the only way we're going to do that is by having a conversation with the voters about the right no, revenue size. that is a false dichotomy. No, it's not. Uh, will you promise me, as Speaker, this? No. We put together every couple of years something called our Citizen's Budget. Which, I love reading it. Uh, reading it, yeah. Will you actually read it and I use do. it use it for part of that discussion where we show where we can re-channel a billion dollars for a lot of those programs by changing what we do in, in government now? I'm open to it. And I, you right. know, when you look at some of the things you've done on the Citizen's Budget around criminal justice reform. This is one place where I think the legislature has done amazing work in a bipartisan fashion to reduce some of the sentences, be smarter on crime, actually save money and reduce the crime rate by being smarter on criminal justice reform. And that's somewhere where you guys have had an instrumental part in playing. Yeah. Now, now do it with Medicare, Medicaid, and, and well, open, education. If you look at Medicaid, the, the cost containment we've been able to do, last year Representative Giroux and Representative Young passed a bill on payment reform, so we're paying for outcomes, not fee for service. Um, we've done accountable care collaborators that are saving tens of millions of dollars. How about getting rid of the old age pension fund? We're the only state in the nation that that's still. That's a constitutional. That's a constitutional Will thing. You? That is something. It's something we should have a conversation about. I'm, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm def, we're no, gonna, we're gonna have one, lots of conversations. Yeah, but that one, I, that one, I'm definitely Speaker, open to. Will you do this again soon? I'm this is always a kick it. for I me. Love Appreciate it. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one.